All right, so we just played with this crazy full spectrum option. So what is full spectrum? It really can be anything you want. So the way I did it is I made a duplicate of all the coloring I had done so far. Complete with any layer styles. I had used bevel and emboss, you know, underneath on this layer. So I really kind of enhanced it. Remember, multiple layers in the sandwich. That way I can always turn them off if I decide it's too much or if I don't want it or I can play with opacity. And then I used, I did the most extreme full spectrum you can do. I went to image adjustment, hue saturation, and I used this hue slider to completely change the color temperature. And then I erased it away at a lower opacity. So now I have a mixture of pinks and blues and purples and greens just everywhere, you know, psychedelic. I can then make a duplicate of that full spectrum. These are on normal at 100%. And I can then push everything I erased away. I can then shift that, right? So I can have multiple versions of full spectrum color, maybe where I have it more warm and it goes from yellow to red instead of from yellow to blue, right? And then I can use layer styles to blend those together in different ways. Like whether I screen them, whether I overlay them. Some of my favorites at this stage are pin light and soft light. which can do really interesting things. Right. So it's just adding more and more kind of subtlety to your coloring. You have so many options. And then of course, I can play with opacity. So that's soft light. So now I'm gonna do one last thing because just like when we did our logos and we did our color versions on our logos, not only is color an option, but also texture, right, can come into digital coloring. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna turn off my black line art. I'm gonna turn off my background. So I just have my digital color. You can see how fully the digital color is an illustration just on its own, even without black lines now. And that's because we focus so much on these fill colors that now I'm going to hold down option and I'm going to say layer merge visible. Now everything is in one combined layer again. And this time I'm going to do glazing. Glazing is a full spectrum technique where you take one color and I'm going to do a variation. So I'm going to go to hue saturation again. And now I'm going to push everything towards one edge. Now I think I want it to be, yeah, maybe on the reds. And I'm going to darken it a little bit and saturate it. So it's like neon. So very different. Now what I'm going to use this for is to texturize my image. So I'm going to turn on my black line art just so I can see it. So that looks crazy. But now if I change the mode to dissolve and then take the opacity down, what it will do is give me this nice kind of complementary color texture to all of my coloring. which I really like in my digital coloring. It makes it a little bit more hand done. And then there's little spots, you know, where things are tricky, but we're not trying to be perfectionists. And then I can always erase away where I don't want it from any of these layers. Like if I want more red in this eye, I find the layer that's causing that. And I just use a, a low opacity eraser and I kind of delete away a little bit. 
let things shine through. If I don't like the highlight in the nose as much, I find the layer it's coming from. Which is tough. Oh, because I merged. Yep. So then I can kind of just slowly erase it through all these different versions and soften it. Like that. All right. So that is full spectrum color. I did a another version of it and this is one where you can just use all over um, effects so if I duplicate it again this time instead of using hue saturation I'm just going to go and do a gradient overlay over everything I'm going to set it on normal mode 100% opacity radial Let me turn off my black line so you can see and then turn off the dissolve and put it at 100% so you can see. So you do something like that. Ah, I don't know why it's accidentally saving. So I have now a radial color on everything. Then I can rasterize that layer style. And then I can do the same thing I did before with dissolve. And this is glazing, kind of adding one color to everything a little bit. And then I can turn on my line art again. And that can help to bring kind of all of your colors into the same realm. Right? These are all great ways to finish off digital coloring, depending on how complicated you want it to be. And that's all within the sandwich. So I have a very layered, complicated sandwich here. And I get to adjust those proportions. That opacity is only at 4%, and yet it makes a big difference. So glazing can be really powerful, especially if you use dissolve to texture it. And it's more subtle than it looks on the computer. They're like discrete colors of pixels. All right, so I like that, so I saved my work. Now for special effects. And this is if what you want to add stuff on top of your assignment. So if you go to on top of your line art, and this is why in my exhaustive explanation of digital coloring, I want you to know these things, be able to use them, even if you choose not to use them for this assignment. The reason I use Wonder Woman so much, we, start, we ended with flat color, is because Wonder Woman has a golden lasso. And no matter how much you color underneath those black lines, that lasso is not golden. Right? At most, it can be a yellow lasso. I don't know why it keeps doing this. Oh, because it's so large. I see. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. That's bigger than I need it to be. Because we don't need these to be like multiple gigs. Anyway, I will fix that. Okay. So you see how beautifully colored that is. Like lots of soft edge duotone. Lots of rendering. That lasso is still not all there. Until you do something called color holds. And color holds are where you can change the color of the outline. So here it got changed to a brown. And then here you use color holds on top of the black inking. In the hair, as bright white highlights on the metal parts. And then that's when you can do like a soft glow on top of the inking to make that lasso glow. Let's see it some other instances. This is a really nice example of a color hold. It's taking over the black lines and replacing them with a layer style glow. So color holds, you can see them demonstrated here, is when you replace your black lines with a different color. And you can add effects so that your color can affect your black as well, like the sun here, replacing it with purple, you know, with a gradient all kinds of different options. So this is my little handout. You'll also find this under links in Canvas that shows all these steps.
sketchy line, vector line art, flat local color, duotone hard edge color, duotone soft edge color, full spectrum color, because you can see some purples there and greens within that yellow. With color holds, notice that the, the black outline has been changed and then a highlight's overtaking everything. And then we're going to add what's called an offset. An offset is so it shows up on different backgrounds, especially dark backgrounds. And we do this with layer styles. And then when we get to our poster, we'll learn about color separation, which is making it match a print technique. So this handout can be really helpful to reviewing all the different stuff on digital coloring. That's why I call it my digital coloring primer. All right. So what can we do? We have our finished full spectrum color. Now to do color holds, I go on top of my black, or I take my black line, line art vector, I duplicate it, and I rasterize it. Why do I rasterize it? So that I can double click and do whatever I want to it, including changing its color. So what if I change it to a dark blue, maybe a light blue? This can be subtle. The dark blue is actually going to help kind of complement and make those, those warms feel warmer. I can also set this at a lower opacity or a higher opacity. I can also fill it with a gradient instead. So let's do a radial, let's do a linear gradient this time. And let's set it on a blending mode of overlay. That doesn't do too much on black. Let's see. Soft light. Doesn't do too much. Pin light. There we go. So crazy rainbow. Now I can layer my color, my blue color, over that. And I can decide how much of that rainbow comes through. So again, you can be just as subtle with your color holds as you are with everything else. So that is a replacement of my black lines. That's black. That's color. What's one advantage of this? It can help it show up on darker backgrounds. So that's with the color hold. This is called a replacement color hold. Sometimes you just want to do it in certain places. Now, if I want it, maybe I want this eye to look like it's glowing, like Wonder Woman's lasso. I can just select this. Duplicate it. And then I can play with a different color hold for this. I can make this a different color. And then I can even add effects like Wonder Woman's lasso, like outer glow, but choose a color. Let's do like a, an orangey red. Yeah, just because I copied it from my black line art. And then instead of screen mode, which lightens it, I'm just going to make it normal mode and extend it as far as I want. Right. And I can always brighten it up. And you see now it's kind of spilling over on top of my line art, just the line art. But without it, it looks like that. And then of course I can play with the opacity of it overall. Let's make it subtle. Now for a really strong color hold, I can just make a new layer on top of my black line art. This is a very common one. Draw a little like twinkle shape make something sparkle. I still have a feather of 30 pixels. It's a little too much. Instead, I'll use a zero pixel feather just so I can show you what I'm doing. Because it's easier to take focus away than to add sharpness back to something. So draw this little star shape, right? Fill it with white. This is on a new layer on top of my line art. That's a color hold. Even though white isn't a color, it's a color hold because what color hold means is that the printer has to hold the black ink in that area 
so that it doesn't get filled in. 